All right, now we come to this final, final part of this video introducing antibodies. And this final part is going to focus on the immunoglobulin fold. And the third challenge I have for you now is to construct a physical model of the immunoglobulin fold. All right, and you're going to do that using some kind of a freeform modeling media, like this tuber. So you can use anything you find around the house, like a piece of wire, anything that's bendable and will then retain its shape. Uh, but, but this tuber actually comes from that student modeling pack, the antibody student modeling pack that you could get from 3D Molecular Designs. You should start by indicating the blue N-terminal end, the red C-terminal end. And then imagine that this protein, <clears throat> this immunoglobulin fold, is being synthesized by a ribosome. And my fist is going to be the ribosome there. So as the protein, the immunoglobulin fold, starts coming out of the exit channel in the ribosome, it'll be the N-terminal end that is synthesized first. So when you get a little bit of that antibody protein made, before the rest of it is even made, this will fold. This will begin to fold. The protein will begin to fold. So you could imagine <clears throat> that you make a hairpin, which is a two-stranded beta sheet. Right? Now, <clears throat> you might think then that if you want to make an immunoglobulin fold, you know that it's one, two, three, four strands, a four stranded beta sheet opposite a five stranded beta sheet. Okay, so there's one, two, Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I haven't told you this, but <clears throat> they're offset by about 20 degrees, one with respect to the other. So you might think that, wow, that's an immunoglobulin fold. All I have to do is put a disulfide bond in here, and I have a physical model of an immunoglobulin fold. If you were to do that, you'd be completely wrong. This is not an immunoglobulin fold. The fold is much more complex than that. So let me try to, before I tell you how, how to fold it with this, I want to show you a couple of PowerPoint slides here. So you might ask, when did we first discover that this was the structure of an antibody? The answer as to when was it discovered is 1973. That's when... Uh, Saul and his colleagues published this paper that reported the first antibody structure. So this was a crystal structure. And here's an immunoglobulin fold. <clears throat> now, notice first of all that it's in black and white. It's hand-drawn. This is not computer-drawn. This was, this was drawn by hand. I wouldn't look at it too closely because I frankly can't quite see a four-stranded beta sheet opposite a five-stranded beta sheet. But back in 1973, this is what they first thought it looked like. And then over here in figure 5, they show you a very sophisticated three-dimensional model of, of the FAB. It's actually four immunoglobulin folds in this fragment of uh, protein that they solved the structure of. And I only mention this to point out that you can't tell a darn thing from this. But this is what people were facing back in 1973 when they were just starting to get these amazing structures of proteins. Um, but the job of trying to communicate those structures to, to their fellow researchers was very, very difficult. And this was not a good solution. This simply proves that they constructed a model. But as far as communicating what that shape, what that structure looked like to others, it was pretty difficult. Needless to say, no one had any idea that uh, high school kids back in 1973 might be thinking about the structure of, a, of this protein. Fast forward to today, and here, right here, is a physical model of an immunoglobulin fold. This is the kind of model that you're going to be making in just a few weeks um, using 3D printing technology and, and JMOL. But I put this slide in here because I want you to look at at this sort of folding map, because as you take your tuber now, or some 
flexible wire and you try to make the true shape of an immunoglobulin fold, you might want to follow this path right here. You're going to start here at the end terminal end of the protein and the chain starts off, makes a little jog here, and then here's that first hairpin, right? On the top blue beta sheet. But then as the path of the protein continues, it then goes down and generates the first three strands of the bottom sheet in green. And then the chain comes back up to the top sheet. You add another hairpin, which would be strands three and four to the blue sheet. And then it goes back down to the green sheet and you finish that off with another hairpin. So one, two, so one, two, three, four, five sheets here, five strands here, four strands up here. That's the path that you have to follow when you now pick up your tuber. Alright, so I could try to do this on camera here. And I would embarrass myself. I would start with two strands. And then I know that it dives down to the other beta sheet down here. And I think we said we make three strands. Right? And I'm going to bend that down here. Before you then come back up to the top sheet. And you contribute strands three and four to the top sheet. You turn that around. One, two, three, four. And then the path goes back down. Back down where you contribute the fourth and fifth strand of the bottom sheet. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And also notice that the N terminal end, C terminal end are pointed in different directions. That's a good sign that you're, you've gotten the right fold. All I have to do now is put a disulfide bond that connects this bottom sheet with this top sheet, and I've got an immunoglobulin fold. So here is a prefolded version of the immunoglobulin fold with a single disulfide bond that connects the second strand of the top sheet with the next to the last strand of the bottom sheet. So that's an immunoglobulin fold. I challenge each of you to create that. And when you're successful, <clears throat> uh, take a photo of that, share it with the other MAPS teams on that website. And uh, it's just fun, fun to see. I, I'm anxious to see the different kinds of physical models of an immunoglobulin fold that you might come up with.